We're looking at a Western Electric 1C series single slot payphone. This is the 1C2, which is the touch tone version. If it was a rotary dial, it would be a 1C1. I will demonstrate how the phone functions internally. There are two critical elements of any coin phone on a legitimate central office coin line. These phones were referred to as dumb phones because they do not have the ability to route, think on their own, add or delete digits, allow or disallow calls. That function is done at the central office. In my case, I have this connected to a coin line in a step-by-step -step central office. I had done a video on a modification, not a detailed video, but where I modified a rotary-only coin trunk to have a touch tone converter on it so I can use rotary or tone telephones. I will demonstrate the internals of the payphone and explain what happens at the phone and briefly a few tidbits of information about what is happening at the central office. These telephones, when they're modified for home use, is nothing but a standard single line telephone in a steel box. It cannot collect or return. There has been some aftermarket controllers made that can collect and return the coin. However, they don't know if the call was answered or not. They're just using a timing element. These phones also had been converted, some of them, to COCOT, which stood for Customer Owned Coin Operated Telephones. And they had the chassis board that I'll show you shortly removed and a computer installed in its place and that meant the phone could do all of the functions that was needed internally and only needed a standard loop start home type phone line or they called it a public access line which had some class marks so when you dialed the operator um, they would know you were coming from a private owned phone as well as the carriers knew that it was a private owned phone and that was stuff that was used for the COCOT industry. Here is the inside of the 1C series telephone. You have a 1A coin relay, which is standard for any of the 1C, 1D series phones. You have a 31A chassis, which makes this a C version. Um, there's a terminal strip down here that has the options if I wish to convert this telephone to coin first and connect it to a ground start line. I can do that. There was a federal law late 70s that telephones had to be converted to dial tone first. In case of an emergency, you would need to have the phone functioning without a coin because if you did not have a coin and you needed to call the operator or dial 911 on a coin first phone, you just had a dead phone and this did cause problems. So eventually all of the 1C ground start phones were changed. The 1D series phones were all made as dial tone first. They did not have any optioning in it. We have a 1A totalizer. This totalizer is what determines how much money is needed for the local call. When you deposit a coin in there, there's three switches, that actually two switches, that operate to determine if it was a nickel, dime, or quarter. At that time, there's also, when a coin is deposited, there's a flap on the coin relay, and I will try to show that uh, in the future of this video, that drops down. In order for the central office to know that there was a coin actually deposited in the phone, 
you would have to operate the flap, which is what's behind the coin relay. It's controlling it. So you would put a coin in and the flap would drop down, make a contact. That contact then would put a very large resistor between ground and the tip side of the phone line. While you were dialing your call, if it was a local call, the coin trunk at the central office would, between the third and fourth digit of your call, remove the tip side of the phone line from the switching equipment and look to see if there was a ground coming from the payphone. If there was a ground coming from the payphone, the central office would continue to process the phone call. In my case, I have a step-by-step -step central office and a rotary coin trunk that I converted. So again, it does look for a coin from the payphone between the third and fourth digit. This was done so that you could dial 911 or any of what they referred to as service codes of the N11. N meaning any digit zero through nine. Also, the coin trunks had the ability to be strapped to allow toll free calls as well as free calls to the operator if they chose to do that. In the Pacific Northwest Bell Territory that I am familiar with, I never ever in my lifetime found a ground start Western Electric payphone. Mountain Bell had them, and I've been in exchanges in Montana as well as Utah that did have coin first payphones. At that time, that was a foreign concept to me because I thought, well, if you have to put a coin in to call the operator, the phone is basically useless at that time. So the 28 coin mech here separates out the nickels, diamond quarters and puts them into the correct slot. And then as the coin drops through, it operates the flap. I would deposit a coin and hopefully my camera will be able to pick it up and show what's happening with the totalizer. So I would take the phone off hook. I have dial tone. I would deposit a coin in the phone. And then when I hang up, well, that's not gonna work. It did detect that there was a coin in the phone and it collected the phone because I made a call um, that was unanswered or didn't die at all. The coin relay um, operates and the central office equipment through a sensitive relay knows that that coin relay operated. Otherwise it would do a second trial to collect the coin and or bring in an alarm. So I will put the coin back in again and if you watch the little wheel here you might see it rotate that says I put in a dime and then of course I will like I said hang up here if I was to make a call and the call was accepted or uh, answered then when I hung up the phone would collect the coin the way that they're doing the collect and return is they're using 110 volts positive or 110 volts negative. Depending upon the polarity that the central office trunk sends out will make the phone collect or return. Internal in the coin relay way down low is a magnet and because this coil here um, is a regular DC coil, it does not care what the polarity is. It'll change the magnetics so that the magnet will either um, push away or pull towards to uh, internal in the relay in order to collect or return the coin. You also have here an oscillator. On a local telephone call, the oscillator provides no function. When you listen carefully in the background, you can hear 
the tones that the oscillator is producing uh, one beep for a nickel, two beeps for a dime, or five beeps for a quarter. That has no function at all on a local call. However, if you was to dial the operator and want to pay for the call in cash at the payphone, then the oscillator is going to, of course, it doesn't know if it's a local call or a toll call, it'll produce the tones. And the operator will then be listening in her headset for the tones, and they are trained to count the tones as one beep, two beep, or five beeps. When the system was upgraded shall we say the long distance, the automatic coin telephone service, which began in the late 70s, at least on the West Coast, they had a machine that would listen for the tones that the oscillator produced. So when you made a one plus long distance call, the computer would come on the line and tell you, please deposit $1.35 for the first three minutes, for an example. As you deposited the coins in the phone, the totalizer would be continuing to step uh, for the nickel to dime a quarter, and that would signal the oscillator to send out however many beeps it needed. Actually, the totalizer opened and closed a continuous tone from the oscillator. The oscillator produces a, a single tone, and then there's switches inside of the uh, totalizer that opens and closes through the dialing mech or the um, rotary mechanism here and that would send out sorry about that i didn't know what time it was anyway um it would send out the beep single double and five <clears throat> then if the call was answered the toll system would send a tone back to the central office coin trunk to collect or return the money. So in the case of an answered call, it would send a positive 110 volt signal. And in the case of a unanswered or busy call, you would get your money back. So the 1D version of this has a different chassis. It's a 32 type chassis. It has a solid state totalizer and the back side of the chassis has dip switches to set the rate. And again, the rate is only to affect the local call. So you have functions in the coin relay and the totalizer um, to determine a local call by putting a ground on the tip side of the line and then the oscillator was used to signal the operator or the ACTS system. These phones worked very very well. Um, I mean there was hundreds of thousands of them in service. The one issue with the mechanical totalizer is like anything else mechanical as it aged it would have issues as well as the environment that the telephone was in. These phones I would deposit a coin and you will see the totalizer rotate for a quarter. I will hang up and you will see it return. I've zoomed in to the flap that is on the coin relay. I would deposit a coin inside of the telephone and that flap will have operated. Because of the totalizer has been set for a 25 cent call between the flap being operated and the totalizer set for 25 cents, we now have a completed circuit so that the tip side of the line will provide a ground towards the central office. When I hang up, you will see the coin relay will operate and the flapper return. I would do that one more time 